when you look at domestic violence and you look at domestic abuse, depending on where you are and how the term is used, but they're kind of used interchangeably because both are allegations of physical violence that are committed between two people. So that could be people who are living together, people who are married, and those who are dating. And like, for instance, when you look at the state of Wisconsin, Wisconsin use in some of their legal terms domestic abuse, where other states may use domestic violence when they're describing the term. So it just kind of depends on where you live and how that term may be used. Now, when you're looking at it legally, they're looking at it for intentional infliction of physical pain, intentional infliction of physical impairment, some type of physical activity sexual assault, but then when you're talking with victims and you're using it in terms a little loosely, then they're talking about not only the physical side, but they're also talking about the verbal side. Now, there are some states that have laws that it can be an intentional bodily harm, it can be an imminent bodily harm, it can be rape, sexual offense, and in some cases, it's harassment that arise from a level where somebody feels as if you're going to inflict harm on them or cause them some type of emotional distress. If you take a state such as North Carolina, they have a statute, and in that state, threatening or intimidating assault or aggressive assault, either one of those can be considered domestic violence or domestic abuse. That also includes kidnapping, any criminal trespassing or criminal damage that may cause harm to someone. Disorderly conduct, that also can be included in that as well. Verbal abuse should be taken seriously, but then you also have to look at it, is it reported? Because if it's not reported and it's just someone talking to another friend or someone just casually talking to someone, it's not going to be taken as seriously. But when you think that, okay, I've been harassed, I've been aggravated harassment or stalking, that is even considered a form of domestic violence or domestic abuse. Videotaping, filming, digital recording in some days, animal cruelty, all of those are considered, even though you didn't touch me, but you abused my animal as a way or means of hurting me, that is considered domestic violence. And a lot of times people don't think of it that way, but it is. Kidnapping, holding someone against their own will is domestic violence. Threatening someone, intimidating someone. If it is reported to law enforcement where someone feels like they've been intimidated, they've been threatened, and it's causing them an emotional distress to make them feel like if they're going to be hurt, it's considered domestic violence. Research has shown domestic violence is not just physical. It can be verbal. And a lot of times it is. Domestic violence, when you look at it, it's not not just the hitting and the punching, but it's breaking someone down. It's tearing them down. And a lot of times the words will end up being more effective than the actual action of someone hitting. And it lasts long. It has a lasting effect on someone's mentality much longer than a physical altercation or someone punching you. In false pretense, a lot of it was the underlying signs, the name calling, the degrading of the women to make them feel as less than what they truly were. And that too is seen as domestic violence because you're tearing a person's character down. You're breaking them down as a person to make them feel less than what they truly are. There was no physical violence per se except toward the end. There was some physical harm that was caused to the character. And then throughout, there were little displays of physical violence in the character which played the mother of Dion. It didn't come out showing it, but just the actions that she had taken against her children demonstrated some of the harm that, that had come to her life. You saw a lot with Sydney and the men in which she was engaged with. And this name calling is a huge one. When you call someone out of their name or you use words like they can't or uh, they'll never be or things of that nature, you're breaking someone down. You're telling them that there will never be anyone. And, and it starts to play on someone's mentality. And a lot of times in domestic violence, the man or the woman, because it can happen in either one of the two, will break a person down just by the words that they merely say to that person. You can't be, or you're not as good as, or someone else is better than you, or you'll never be this, you never complete this, or you never do that. You're breaking someone else down so that you're putting a, almost like a mental hold on them. And it's important that not only 
are people educated on it and awareness brought to it. But when someone starts to feel as if they can intimidate you, they can cause verbal harm, eventually it will escalate. And a lot of times it goes from that verbal to, okay, I'm going to hit you one time. I'm going to shove you one time. So the next thing is, okay, I blackened your eye. You didn't do anything about it. So I'm going to take it to another step. I'm going to break a bone. You didn't do anything about it. And then the next time it may be your life. So that's why it's important that you don't allow these things to lie dormant or not talk about them or not bring awareness to them because eventually it will cause someone their life. There are many resources available on a state as well as a local level. Yes, there's the National Domestic Violence Hotline, and that is available 24-7 in over 200 languages. The number is 800-797-7233, or you can even text 88788. There's also availability for you to chat as well as to go on their official website, www.hotline.org. In addition to the Domestic Violence Hotline, the National Hotline, there are state agencies such as in Florida, they have the Harbor House of Central Florida. There is the Georgia Coalition Against Domestic Violence. There is Better Help, which talks about domestic violence. You can also find the National Domestic Violence Hotline on Facebook. You have the Illinois Domestic Violence Victim Services. You have in Washington, the Washington State Coalition Against Domestic Violence. You have the Women in Distress, which is also available. City of Orlando that has the Domestic Violence City of Orlando, and each city should have this as well. Miami-Dade County has the Domestic Violence Assistance in Dade County. The Virginia Department of Social Services has the domestic violence area within it. The Women Against Abuse in Philadelphia has the domestic violence hotline. The New York City.gov has the domestic violence and gender-based violence support. In Hawaii, they have the Social Service Domestic Violence Resource. Kansas City has the Kansas City Police Department, which has the domestic violence assistance. Pennsylvania has the Coalition Against Domestic Violence.